Okay, so sitting in Dandasana to start with. So we like to start with this action quite often so we can see our legs. And this is really a key thing in all of the asanas is that you want to see how much you can encourage that energy to come back into the body. So although the thighs are weighting down, the bones are weighting down, the shins are weighting down, everything else, the skin fiber and the tissue has to extend in this way. So if this means to say that you lose that attention here, like that then you want to see that you sit on some support there's no problem in that just be in your dandasana now the key thing here is that what keeps you upright is grounding even more into your thighs so that's a challenging thing to practice so i'm going to show you a way how you can practice that and get some feedback what i mean by that is when we use props it can be really informative. So what we're going to do now is to grip a brick. So some of you have worked in this way if you've been uh, practicing Iyengar yoga for a long time, then some of you have been practicing in this way. So I want you to see that when you get this action with the belt, kind of gives you a bit more focus. It brings those legs in. And boy, does it work them really strongly. So you've got to see that these legs move in a little bit closer so that you can lift out of the pelvis and lift up. Now what you want to do is to ground this, this brick down, but actually at the same time, as you push it down, you lift up through the sideways. So some challenges there now that's not all if that's not enough then we're going to come into parvatasana reaching those arms now try not to throw your chest forward so hopefully you're working with me now keep the length and extension all the way through the body ground down into your thighs and reach up reach up and breathe get that elongation length, extension, everything working really nicely. Okay, and then releasing down. We'll come to the other side, extending, we're reaching, extending up. So you want to get that extension all the way through. Lift up, dorsal spine in. So, so much work required here. And then releasing. Well done. All right. So we're going to take this off now. So the belt comes off. Okay. So you've got to try to get that connection when you come into your forward bending action. So our forward bending action is Adha Mukhishwanasana. Now I want to see that actually... I'm still becoming aware of those legs. And what people tend to do is not encourage that breadth of frame. So you just push into your legs. That's all that happens. But you have to see that you pull up your legs, how we were doing in Dandasana, and then see as if you've got that brick and belt there, can you push back with the brick, with the belt? So much extension is required here to get the full length of the spine. And it doesn't stop. It just continues to become such a strong practice over time. Okay, so be finishing your Adha Mukhishwanasana and then we come for Uttanasana. So just see here. Now take a look at the screen. Now my feet are a lot wider now, but actually I want to see that as you make this triangle going up to the center of the body, this triangle, I want to see that this becomes a rectangle. So that means to say I've got to move those inner groins deeply away. Now, by broadening this back buttock, it will give me the support required. Then folding my arms and just releasing down. 
and softening, 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 softening. So once you can get those legs extended, then the spine will start to soften. All right, and release in. So I want you to have a look at the screen again. Come up, just come up slowly and just be watching. All right, those of you who have real problems with the knees, I know that there are quite a few issues with that area. So don't worry, just have a look at the screen. You'll be able to see the modification. So when you're here, you need to see that it's a bit like a Virabhadrasana one action, but without the back leg. How nice is that? So you want to see that you lift up nicely, reaching the arms eventually. Now, you want to lift up before you throw those arms back in any way whatsoever, because the dorsal spine needs to go in. Dorsal spine in. Okay, so you got the idea of that. So come on then, have a go. See that you take your right leg forward, left leg back, just look forward and then see, can you get that stability? Can you get that support? Are you able to reach those arms and then reach those arms up and over? So quite a challenging action. Okay, so just work with that for a while to see that you are able to get the lift before you take those arms all the way or as far as you can. Okay, and now release in. Let's do the other side then. So you may need to have a little bit more padding if you find it a bit challenging on those leg fibers. So when we're here, again, you want to reach into the action you can see that this fold is really quite deep here. Then I'm going to take my arms up. Now I want to reach out of the pelvis as much as I can. And then lift the door so you can see that extra action opposed to drop it. Move the dorsal in so you're coiling and getting this action. You can see this connection happening. And when you're ready, releasing down. Okay, well done. Okay, and releasing standing Tadasana. So standing in Tadasana, lifting up through the center of the body and just be here for a moment or two. Soft inhale, soft exhale. Okay, well done. All right, so we're gonna work the arms now. So those of you familiar with Gumukasana, if you know you need a belt at this point, then grab yourself a belt. So just take a look at the action, reaching with the back of the palm, extending up, and then catching. So those of you who catch well, you've still got to push those Elbows away from one another, keeping that action nicely. If you're holding the belt, that's fine, no problem there. So see if you can keep that lift, lifting the sternum chest, lifting up through the center of the body, and then releasing, lifting up again. Okay, so we're going to go for the other side now. So if you need your belt, have your belt. I know with this side for me personally, I need a little bit of help. So I'm taking this arm up, encouraging here with the other hand. So just see that if you need to give yourself that little bit of encouragement, then do so. If you need to have the belt, have the belt, no problem and then catch it, then catch him, and push those elbows away from one another. You want to see that you push the elbows up and away. Yeah, and just be there for a few moments. 
So see if you could be in it for a little while. This is really the art of intermediate practice is that you're not wishing to be out of it. <laughs> Although we probably find if there's really tight shoulders, then that's the obvious mindset. And now really sin, oh, well done. So we're coming for Chatush Padasana now. So when we come for Chatush Padasana, you want to see that you either use your belt or you grab the front ankles. Now I want you to see this action. I work better with the belt, but I'm gonna use this classic way of working. Did you notice that I opened my chest before I went up? So just have a look at the screen if you missed that. I actually collected my shoulders. Now I'm here and I can't go very far. So I have to see that I keep the lift of the back of the thigh, the lift of the back creases, and it's the chest that's not opening. So I'm gonna move the arms in a little more and then lift the chest. So again, I need to do a little bit more maneuvering. In I go and lift up. So a bit difficult to talk in that action. So if you do need to have a belt around the feet, then you can make the handles as we usually work um, in this way. So you just make the handle so you've got two handles, so you don't need two belts. And this actually makes it quite even. So whichever way you're working, then have a go and see, are you able to get this action with the holding of the feet or the belt? Now I want you to just work with that action, two or three adjustments, getting the chest really nice and open. You want to see that this dorsal spine is moving in. We've done a bit of work on that already, it's key. So it's kind of work that you get in your Sarvangasana. So if you're practicing your Sarvangasana regularly, then your back bends are going to improve, no doubt. Okay, so had enough? <laughs> Okay, and releasing. All right, I just want you to have a look at the screen. Now, we're coming into Uddhva Dhanarasana. Now, I'm gonna just do the classic action, and then I'm gonna show you some of the variations. So don't worry at all if you find this a bit challenging. I do too, so it doesn't matter. It certainly doesn't matter if you find it a little bit difficult to get up because some people find this very easy and some people just find it hideously difficult. So you've got to see that your elbows are pointing up towards the ceiling. Do you can you see how they, they move out like that? So you want to press into your feet and then start the lifting process. Now, you've got to take a nice deep breath in and press into your palms because you need a bit of oomph to lift that upper back so that you come onto the top of the head. Like that. And then you need a little bit more oomph to press and go up. Okay, so that's Uddhva Dhanarasana. So some of you can be trying that. All right, so just have a look at the screen for a moment and you'll be able to see these variations. So you can see here the chair action. This is a really nice way to get the back nice and open. So you can do this practice with your back going over the chair, hands to the wall, several times just to get the chest open. And then introducing a bolster. So a bolster on the chair, you just have to monitor your weight distribution with the bolster because sometimes it can actually um, become quite light the chair so you just have to see but having the bolster underneath your back really does give you that feeling 
of Asana, and that's a really nice way to practice. So you can work with the bolster in trying to introduce that action of the back, but also you can work with the bolster to actually improve your back agility. And to do this, you need to turn yourself around so you're facing the wall, and then you take yourself on that bolster and then beyond. There's a little bit more challenging. Okay, so well done, those are the options. So just choose which practice you're going to practice and have a go with it and work with it. Pause the video and see that you have a go at Uddhvadhanarasana, either on the chair, either on the chair and the bolster, or even trying to expand your practice. And then finally, the classic pose. Okay, well done. All right, so once you have had a go at that and you've practiced, then we're coming for Savangasana. Now, if you're not practicing Savangasana today, then come into Viparita Karani to the wall. All right, so when you come for your Savangasana, I just want to show you a little bit of practice here because we're going to come into Supta Kanasana. So Supta Kanasana is always a really nice um, way to release the back because it opens it in a really nice broad way. Now if you are practicing with your platform in this way, it's quite nice to use a bolster to give you the launch. Don't forget you can also use a belt to train your arms. Remember that our body has condition in it and with the props it does help to try to move through those, those set habits in the body. So if you need a belt for Savangasana, that's no problem. So I just want you to see where we're going here. So remember, when you take the feet down, you've got to draw the abdomen to the spine and then releasing the legs down. So you're supporting your back and then you're going to take the legs wider. So I've got a blanket here. So you want to make sure you clear the deck before you come into this action. And what I love about this is that you can roll into it, keep the legs widening. So that is just a starting point, but those of you who've got a bit more flexibility, use this to encourage this breadth and broadness across the back. And I want you to just be here for a few moments, softening the abdomen towards the spine, and then Eventually, we're going to bring the legs together and come up to the Savangasana action. Okay. All right. So let's have a go. Subta Kanasana, really nice action. We're not coming for the Pajva today. The Subta is the one that we want to um, have go at. So if you've not already got into it, be in Subta Kanasana. And when you're in this pose, See that you're rolling the skin fibers to the thighs. Roll the skin fibers to the thighs and get that breadth and broadness across the lower back. From the leg action, broad, open. Go and see if you can get that connection with it. Lift through the abdomen and bring the legs back together. Support your spine, put your belts on if you need them and then go up into Savangasana. So remember that we've been rinsed the spine through the practice, so you want to see that you lift up nicely. Get that really nice extension through the center of the body. And again, see that you ground down into the base. So the upper arms have got to work strongly. You've got to lengthen through the upper arm, but also ground down. Now remember the action in Dandasana at the very beginning of the class. How long those thighs needed to become, how long the fibers needed to become. 
And now it's your arms that need to come into this action of length and extension. And from there, you can move deeply into your upper back fibers. So see that you're getting that connection. And once you can become stable at the base, lengthen through the spinal column, lengthen the back of the pelvis to the back of the thighs and extend up into your heels. And again, some of you may be working towards eight minutes in this by now. Get ready to give yourself another lift up. And then with that lift up, come down with control, either both legs, one leg and then the other, or bent knees, and then releasing the feet to the floor. And just again, resting the head down. So keep in your position. So what I mean by resting the head down is to not rush up or sit up, just stay where you are. And take a few longer, deeper inhalations. <laughs> 